Okay, so we start off with a fairly straightforward quadratic to factorise. It doesn't have a plus C term, it doesn't have a number at the end. And all these ones can be factorised by simply saying what goes into both terms. So what goes into x squared and 3x? Well, the answer is x. So take an x outside the brackets, and inside the brackets we're left with x minus 3. And that's all there is to it. Hopefully that one is not too bad for you guys. Question 8 is the next stage up. We've got all the terms of a quadratic, but we don't have a number in front of x squared. So we're simply looking at uh, the coefficient of x and the plus c at the end. We want two numbers that will add to give 7 and multiply to give 6. The best way to do this is to start with what they multiply to give. OK, so look at the factor pairs of 6. 2 and 3 don't work. So the only other factor pairs of 6 are 1 and 6. And I can see that, yes, they do add to give 7. So my factorised version is x plus 1 brackets x plus 6. And that's our factorised form. OK, question 9. A little bit harder. We've now got um, a number in front of x squared. We have a 6 there. So we can't just say, well, what adds up to give 1 and multiplies to give uh, minus 12. But what I do, the method I prefer, is to look at the coefficients a, b, and c. And we use those. So we, we write down what a times c is. In this case, 6 times minus 12 is minus 72. And we write down the value of b, which is just 1. And what we're looking for is two numbers which are going to multiply to give me minus 72, and they will add to give me 1. So um, if I look at those, I know that one of them's got to be negative, because they multiply to give a negative answer. And because they add to give a positive, the positive one has got to be bigger. In this case, it's got to be bigger by 1. So I'm looking at factor pairs of 72. Um, I could start with 1 and 72, but I know that they're uh, much too different. So let's just pick a number I know goes into 72. Um, we'll start with 6. So if we have minus 6, the other number would have to be 12. They, of course, add to give 6, so it's not quite right. Um, so let's try a bigger number than 6. Uh, 7 doesn't go into 72, so let's try 8. Minus 8. Well, 8 times 9 is 72. And that fits, because if I add these two numbers together, I get 1. So I've now got minus 8 and 9, and what I do is I use these to replace the value of b. So 6x squared, I'll write that out again, but instead of plus x, I have plus 9x minus 8x. I'm using these two values, and I still have the minus 12 on the end. So um, the next step is to factorise adjacent pairs. So 6x squared plus 9x, what goes into both of those? Well, 3x. So I take that out of the brackets, I'm left with 2x plus 3. For the next bit, I know that the bracket should be the same, so I'll write that down first to make my life easier. And I think what would have to go in front of this so that it would multiply out to give minus 8x minus 12, and the answer is minus 4. So I can check that by imagining multiplying out, and it will give me minus 8x minus 12. Now the bits in front of the brackets, 3x and minus 4, that gives me one of my final brackets for my factorised form. And the other one is simply the bracket that we've already got. So my answer is 3x minus 4 times 2x plus 3. You might not do it this method, but find a method that works for you for this sort of uh, quadratic. Finally, question 10. You just have to be able to recognise these. What's going on here? We've got the difference of two squares. So why do we call it that? Well, I've got t squared, that's something squared, and 16 is obviously 4 squared difference because there's a subtraction. So t squared minus 4 squared can be written as t plus 4 in the first bracket and t minus 4 in the second bracket. So as I said, you've just got to be able to recognise this, do a bit of revision if you need to.